so going to the nearctic realm nearctic realm basically means the north american region this is the north american region and we can see that these are the different areas coming under the north american region that is most of the north american continent except the southern tip this central america and this southern portion of mexico except these two regions almost all the north american continent is coming under the nearctic realm then in addition to that we has also greenland even though greenland is very close to canada or north american continent it was uh, for a long time occupied by denmark and there are no people living there it is mostly an ice covered island but it is under the control of uh, denmark it's uh, i think for centuries denmark is uh, uh, is uh, uh, ruling this greenland then there is a small island here this island is known by the name newfoundland this is is known as a newfoundland and all the islands in the uh, northern portion of the uh, canada which are coming under the administrative control of canada then this uh, mexican plateau mexico has two portion the southern portion is coming under the neotropical realm whereas the northern and middle portion are coming under the nearctic realm so this is how the how the how the nearctic realm is has been classified so these are the various regions coming under the nearctic realm now we have to see what are the physical features and also the sub regions and faunistic regions uh, faunistic features of the nearctic realm the first uh, the character is that the first is regarding the temperature going to the temperature if you take the nearctic realm it has extremes of temperature what do you mean by extremes of temperature if the, the that is extreme uh, high uh, extreme heat and extreme cold that is the meaning of the word extreme temperature that means very high uh, the, 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 the very high <coughs> temperature may be more than 40 or 50 degrees centigrade and and then i'm going to the lower temperature it may be up to minus 50 etc there are some regions of uh, canada where the temperature is below minus 50 and there are some regions in and and californian desert we can see the temperature may be above 45 or 50 so that uh, that is why it, uh, this region is characterized by wide variation in temperature extreme cold and extreme heat this is the one important peculiarity of the nearctic realm and you can see that there are some some regions here for example if you look at the map this is the map of near uh, north america there are so many desert here this is sonora desert is there mojave desert here then and the, here there is a californian desert here and all in in the western portion i have told you many times that most of the deserts are usually located on the western portion of major continents it is because of the rotation of earth from west to east that is why the deserts are usually formed on the western border of major continents then uh, in this region this region is mostly covered with snow or, or this is a tundra region in this region also the temperature is very low so that is one feature of the uh, nearctic realm that extensive mountain range in the west mountain range mean just like our western ghats and himalayas we can see large mountain ranges here there is alaskan range here then there is a one prominent mountain range in north america that is a rocky mountains rock you can see that this entire brownish area are rocky mountains it is occupying almost uh, one third of the north american continent so so the western border is formed of very high mountains and these mountains are mainly the rocky mountains and there are also smaller mountain range like alaskan range alaska is uh, here uh, this is the alaskan range then mackenzie mountain is there so all these are part are forming an important and geographical feature of the nearctic realm 
and and uh, this mountain range will be having its own its own type of vegetation and animal life in the mountains are also different so going to the neartic realm one strange important feature is the presence of large area of the neartic realm is actually a form of mountain ranges so there is another character so in these mountain ranges are most of the time located on the west then arctic belt of tundra sometimes in the many people you might have studied uh, the word as tundra it is not tundra the correct pronunciation is tundra so the arctic belt of tundra in the north here you can see that this is the uh, arctic belt that is 60 degree north after the 60 degree north latitude actually to be more precise this out uh, after the 66 degree north line this here you can see here at line after that uh, there, there is arctic circle beyond the arctic circle the region is mostly tundra region and what is the feature what are the significance of this what is the significance of tundra region here you can see i will show you a picture of the tundra region this is a tundra region and most of the time in a tundra region it is covered with uh, permanent snow or we call it by the name permafrost permafrost is the name given to an arctic region and uh, so in the case of arctic region uh, this uh, most of the time this arctic region is covered by permanent snow or and this and, and this permanent snow uh, permanently snow covered soil is known by the name tundra uh, permafrost not tundra so uh, perma presence of permafrost is an important feature of this tundra region very few animals are living there most of the time the temperature may be uh, between minus 28 and minus 50 that is the temperature that we can find uh, the during most of the time so during the winter season it is minus 28 to minus 50 whereas uh, going to the summer season if you take the summer season temperature is still very low uh, during the summer season the maximum temperature will be around 12 degrees centigrade that is the highest temperature that is noted in tundra but most of the time during the summer season it will be around 3 degree or 5 degree centigrade so that is the temperature that <coughs> that comes even during summer season so uh, and because of that very few animals and plants are surviving there because uh, at that temperature it is not possible for most of the trees to complete their life cycle so only because the summer season is very short so during that very short summer season most of the trees and man uh, big plants won't be able to complete its uh, flowering fruiting and seed formation and that won't be they won't be able to complete it properly but there are many smaller plants which has a shorter life cycle and these smaller plants will be able to survive easily in a, uh, easily in the case of this uh, uh, tundra area tundra region so th these are some of the features of the tundra region okay so in this of tundra region what we are seeing is that Uh, the tundra region is mostly covered with the permafrost here you can see that this this is the nature and some kind of mosses most of the time mosses will be there and there are few animals like reindeer you might have heard about reindeer and this kind of animals will be living in the uh, tundra region now when i was reading about the tundra re tundra region that is uh, because of the climate change that we are experiencing today Uh, many snow much of the snow in the tundra region are become uh, uh, is gradually uh, is going if the tundra if that snow is going or snow is uh, melting in the tundra region there is one big problem because if you take the total carbon and then in the air especially the soil carbon about one third of the soil carbon on the earth is actually Uh, deposit they are actually present in the tundra region so when this snow is frozen or snow even during the melting of the snow what will happen is that this so this carbon that is naturally present in the soil of the tundra region will get converted into carbon dioxide and also methane gas 
So when this both carbon dioxide and methane gas is released into the atmosphere, you know what will happen. Both gases will be going into the atmosphere and there they will be forming another uh, deposited and that will lead to global warming again. So the melting of the snow in the Arctic region is therefore posing significant ecological problem not only for Tundra region but for the rest of the world. So that is one big calamity that we may be facing because whatever we do uh, still uh, many parts of uh, India and most many parts of the uh, especially low lying areas may be going under the water. Even, even, even with the best climate control effort, mitigation effort, say large part of the large part of many continents may be going below the sea water, sea level, uh, sea water. That that is going, that is certain. We cannot do much about that. But um, but may, people have more technology. Maybe even sea level is rising. People may be building uh, artificial islands like that. People, man, human beings will survive. But that is not a good. But several low-lying lands will be going below the uh, sea water. So this is these are the features of the tundra. Here you can see the snow-covered region, and most of the snow in the snow-covered region is a polar bear that is mostly present. So polar bear is one of the few animals it, because in this situation living here is very difficult. There will be very little prey. So finding the prey is also not easy and this polar bear is most of the time is uh, feeding on uh, salmon fish or other kind of big fish that may be present below this water. So that's how they, they are surviving there. Here you can see a picture of the Californian desert. So Californian desert is also very dry desert then just and also the Sonarum desert. These are some of the important regions present in the, uh, uh, North America. Then going to the, uh, then another feature is the presence of coniferous forest. If you look at the coniferous and the deciduous forest. So if you look at the east western border of the North America, this is the western border. It is mostly mountain region. Whereas coming to the eastern portion, in the eastern portion, we are finding mostly coniferous and deciduous forest. So this is the eastern portion. In this eastern portion, we are finding that the trees that we are mostly finding are the coniferous trees and also the deciduous trees. We cannot find any kind of uh, uh, evergreen forest or tropical forest in the uh, North American continent. Both are not present in the North American problem. So the eastern portion of the North America or Nearctic realm is characterized by the presence of coniferous forest. You know what is the nature of a coniferous forest. And this is the uh, picture regarding the coniferous forest of the North America. These are tall trees. And uh, in this of conifer coniferous forest, you know how the branching pattern of a coniferous tree. They will be very tall trees. But the branching, the branches on the trees will be very few. And they, they, won't, they won't be forming any umbrella-like pattern. They will be simply tall. Just like eucalyptus tree, you know, how the eucalyptus tree and the cashewina tree are looking like that. So such trees are coming under the coniferous forest. So they are mostly on the eastern portion of the uh, Nearctic region. Then uh, prairies in the central part. What is the feature of a prairie? Here you can see a picture of the prairie. If you look at a prairies, the prairies are mostly uh, the of prairies. These are the uh, wet grasslands uh, uh, of the uh, uh, North America. Because uh, in, in South America we have seen grassland. And the name that we had given for the grasslands of South America is um, uh, called uh, uh, savanna. Similarly, in the case of uh, North uh, Africa, also we can see savanna. But uh, the prairies are also grassland. But this in the in this prairie grassland, there will be more availability of water. It will be because of the uh, lower temperature, cold, and other reason. They are considered as wet grasslands. So if you from the picture itself, you can understand. They are more green, not so much dry. So an uh, important feature of the prairie is that most of the area will be covered with the grass and there will be a lot of cattle and, uh, and there are few occasional trees. 
there will not be any large uh, thick uh, thick present there won't be any uh, there won't be too many trees present but only few scattered trees will be present so this is some of the features of the prairies and in america large regions of american continent are actually covered by this prairie grassland and and uh, uh, the, and, and and these kind of wet grasslands are also present in European continent. Like, and if you go to the Russian region, also we can find and uh, this a large number of uh, several uh, large area of the Russian continent is also occupied by uh, grassland. So this is regarding the the prairie region, and uh, now here the precipitation, uh, the the rainfall, the rainfall will be around. Uh, uh, less around 700 millimeter per year that is the rainfall availability in the prairie so they are not as dry as savanna that is one important feature for the prairies now going to the next uh, portion that is the uh, arid zone in the southwestern part arid zone arid means very dry where is the here if you look at the picture here you can see that this region Whereas this region, uh, this region is character. Where is this region? See, this region is actually southwestern. This is the south side, and this is the western region. You can you can say yeah, there is Sonoran Desert is the, and also the Californian Desert is the Nevada. Nevada is an important. Nevada is a state. Uh, Nevada is the. So these are some of the important desert uh, present in the North American continent. So going to the North American continent, there is a, uh, in the North American continent, the western portion of the North American continent is quite dry, characterized by mostly desert regions. So that is one peculiarity of the no, Nearctic region. Now we can see a few more characteristics of the Nearctic region. In the case of Nigeria, this is a picture uh, showing the desert, not desert, I think uh, this is the region showing the grasslands, I think. Grasslands present in different parts of the, that is the, where the location of the grasslands in different parts of the list shown here. Now, going to the sub-regions of the Nearctic realm, one is the Californian sub-region is the then uh, Rocky Mountain subregion is the, the Mountain states. Then Allegheny subregion is the, and Canadian subregion is the. So these are the four subregions that we are finding in the case of the uh, Nearctic realm. Now going to the first subregion, this is the Californian subregion. As I told you, it is on the western border of the near North America. Californian subregion is actually a narrow region. And that is why a narrow strip between Sierra Nevada and Cascade Mountains. Here you can see that this is a very narrow region that is present between the Cascade Mountains. Here, here you can see that these are the Cascade Mountains. So between the Cascade Mountain and Sierra Nevada, uh, we can find a small region that small region is coming under the a narrow region that is coming in the uh, Californian sub region but it's because it is uh, completely different from rest of the North American region that's why it's known as uh, this it has been placed in a separate sub region then uh, another sub region that we are finding here is a Rocky Mountain sub region so if you look at the Rocky Mountain subregion, you can east east portion of the California, lies east of the California. You may be heard about the city of California. It is a very famous city, but the city is actually located in a desert. So in a desert, the Americans have built a very prominent, very flourishing city, and because of their hard work and, and their money, that is why California has been has progressed into a, a, a very important important city in the world. So the it is east of the California, like a dry and elevated area, and uh, mostly covered by mountain. Here you can uh, feel in the picture. Here you can see that. Uh, on the eastern portion, this is the, it, the Californian region comes under this region. So east of the Kaumann is mostly mountain region. And in this mountain region, 
the there is a high diversity of plants as well as animals it is one of the most diverse or dense regions in america most of the time it is a rocky uh, the rocky mountains are going through there so this region is mostly inaccessible that is one reason why there are a lot of animals and plants uh, plants are surviving there and whereas in this region most of the major cities of america are coming under this plains of this gra this, uh, this this region of on the eastern or middle region of the uh, north america towards the western border very little population is there but here in the california sub region it is mostly plains that is why the people have occupied the californian desert even though it is a it is very hot there so that is the third sub region is the uh, uh, rocky mountain second sub region is a rocky mountain sub region then there is allegheny sub region in this allegheny sub region this is a, this is the allegheny sub region this is chain portion this central lowland this appalachian mountain coastal plain all these are coming under the allegheny sub region there is a third third sub region in the uh, eastern uh, uh, in the eastern uh, in the uh, north american continent then we have one more sub region that is the canadian sub region in this uh, canadian sub region the uh, nor the, nor the um, northern portion of north american continent and also the greenland these are the two areas which are coming under the uh nor canadian sub region so so in the so this canadian sub region there is one the, the, the they are mostly covered with snow the animal life as well as the plant life there is very poor because uh, the region is mostly covered with the snow very cold is there you know the people maybe in canada will be telling uh, this is the situation of canada in most of the area most of the time that will be covered with the snow there will be very uh, the summer season is very short so the northern portion of the, uh, uh, the this northern portion of the uh, neartic realm uh, is belonging to the uh, canada and that is why it is known as a canadian sub region here you can see that there is a state here called alaska even though it is closer to canada it is actually part of united states so this is the uh, is a state of this uh, alaska is a state of united states actually united states bought it from russia a long time back so now and here uh, here this area is the russia this is the alaska and the strait this here there is a very narrow a uh, narrow sea here and shallow waters are also here sometimes during the evolution evolutionary history of earth this area may be a land there is a instead of sea it will be a land and animals from north america can easily migrate to uh, russia and uh, animals from asia can also come to the north america and this is state is known by the name bering strait so these are the four sub regions that we can find in the east of the uh, nearctic realm and we have few more topics to take that we will be taking in another class so today with this i am stopping